Hello, Indy Parks Aquatics. I'm going to take you through our new scheduling system. Um, this is the long form. There is also a short form that can be used with um, facilities that have 11 or fewer staff members. But this is the long form that many of you are going to use. If you have a pool with 11 or fewer, please just watch the short form video. When you open the schedule up, you're going to come first to the Setup tab down at the bottom. Next to the Setup tab, you're going to notice that there are multiple tabs that have the end of a pay period date. And each one of those tabs correlates with the schedule for that pay period. And you'll notice that it is two pages that can be copied front to back. So we will go back to the Setup page and work on setting your facility facility up. At the top we're going to go ahead we're going to put our pool name in and uh, we're going to use Washington. And then we'll begin putting our employees in just kind of in the same manner we would put them in if you were making your own schedule. Um, your supervisors first followed by your lifeguards and finally with your cashiers. And then next to that, you'll see a drop-down menu for their position. So we'll say Supervisor 1 is the pool manager, M being for manager. And then Supervisor 2 is a head lifeguard, a head lifeguard, followed by our lifeguards, which are L's. And our cashiers, which are C's. And you'll see the guide located right here for them. And we'll say that's all the staff we have. So the remaining part here, that's all extra. So we're going to leave that blank. And if you look all the way down at the bottom on lines 37 and 38, you'll see staff going to a pool and staff needed at a pool. Um, this will roll into the um, other sheets down at the bottom. That will give you a place to write if you're sending a, uh, staff somewhere or if you are in need of staff. Um, for when we talk about sharing is caring, or if you've prearranged your uh, staff sharing with another uh, location, that'll give you a place to put that on your schedule. You'll also notice that there is a area to track hours used. Since we are looking um, more closely at staying within our budgeted hours, there's a place here where you can insert your budgeted hours for each line, and that information came from Jenny earlier in the year. And then you can track how many hours each pay period the individual works. So let's say we have a supervisor who is scheduled to work 380 hours, and I have a right protection issue. I'll have that fixed before we send that out. So we'll say it's worked 300, that supervisor will work 380 hours. We see that we haven't put any hours in yet, so they have a remaining of 380. They've worked 60 hours during the first pay period, and they've worked 60 hours the second. So it's see, you can see here how it's kind of tracking how many hours they have remaining for work. After you have gotten that done, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to look at your schedule. And you do that by clicking on one of the tabs at the bottom. You see it's went ahead and moved the names over for us, but it also leaves these test employees in. And we obviously don't need a whole bunch of blanks on, there, on, on the schedule. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on that top cell of the first test one, hold down the shift key, which you can't see me doing, and then click on the bottom of the last test cell, release the shift key, and right click, and we want to click hide, and that's going to go ahead and push everything up. 
then we will take our supervisors under the home menu if you come over here if you would select like the light blue um, shading so that we know that those are your supervisors and then your cashiers and I'm selecting the entire row by clicking and highlighting and just holding the holding the left button down and then again we'll click to highlight and if you would do that for each one of your tabs um, for security reasons you'll have to do this to each one of the weeks uh, because the cells are locked at that point you can go ahead and begin scheduling your employees remembering the guidelines that Jenny talked about a supervisor training you can come in you can write your um, proposed times in of when you're going to start so we'll say that we have open swimming from 12 o'clock we can make that fit to 4 o'clock and that's just a reminder to help us schedule so we're going to have our first supervisor come in at 11 o'clock and they're going to leave at 4.30 p.m. and you can either write in uh, if you watch up at the top here at the function screen you'll see me type it in you can r either write in 4 p.m. and hit enter or if you know the military equivalent um, for 4 o'clock which would be 1600 hours you can write that in and skip putting in the p.m. and it'll automatically tell you that that's a p.m. time you'll see below it it says that's a five hour time period and it takes care of figuring out the length and also summing that for your weekly total remember all of our employees um, can work no more than 40 hours a week and you'd go ahead and at that point you'd write in your guards time to come in so our 15 minutes beforehand to our including our cleaning time at 430 be good to have a supervisor there to supervise that and let's say um, supervisor number two needs to come in early to vacuum so up at the top we can put under other 10 o'clock to noon as a, an other And we'll schedule supervisor number two in from 10 until 4.30. So we'll do 16.30. The tab key is giving me some issues here. And you'll see that the cell below that turned yellow. If you start seeing cells turning yellow, that's normal. That just means that this supervisor is working more than the six hours that are allowed by the Department of Labor and that they need to take a 30-minute break. And that's just a reminder. And you see up at the top here, mandatory 30-minute break for um, yellow shading on the hours. But we're going to say that lifeguard number two, that's going to be our backup lifeguard for the day. And what we're going to do, we're just going to indicate that that lifeguard may be required to work from 11.45 until 4.30. And you're going to see it go ahead and put the time in. And it's going to sum it just like that individual is going to work. But what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the time, come up here, and we're going to use um, a blue or we come in and work. Um, but the policy at your facility should be if they haven't heard from you by 15 minutes after their on-call time, they need to uh, be released. We don't want we don't want people trying to hold off doing things all day. But um, they just need to know that they need to be available. If they get a phone call at 11 o'clock that they need to come into work, they do need to come into work, and that that would have been their assigned time to work. 